As you travel the open road, look to your left, look to your right, and even in your rearview mirror, and you'll see a retooling, resizing, and electrification of the open road. But sometimes there's something that drives by that reminds you of the good old days. Hey, welcome to this Dish and Road Warrior. I'm your host, Grant Robertson. Now behind me is the 2023 Wagoneer L that makes no apologies about upsizing its offering, delivering power under that hood, and enough room to take you and your family and maybe even the kitchen sink. So when it comes to referencing this vehicle, you may need to drop the Jeep because Wagoneer seems to be its own brand identity, though the grill warfare lets you know that it has family ties. Now where this vehicle measures up into the competition is well with the big boys, basically up against the Expedition XL, the Yukon XL and the Chevy Suburban. And this is a place where Jeep you could say is going all in. All the chips on the table go big or go home. And well, Jeep is going down this path before this one as well. Basically referring to the Jeep Grand Cherokee, that upsize going to that third row, calling it the Jeep Grand Cherokee L. That's something I complained about for years, basically only offering five passenger comfort when the size vehicle could deliver more. Thankfully, they've upsized their game there. Now, when it comes to the Wagoneer, you could say it's full throttle with the expanse of acreage you see here. And that's what you have to deliver when you go with those namesakes I've just mentioned. So with the Wagoneer L, certainly the big size draws my attention, but it's the exterior design that really holds it. And what I'm referring to is that the Wagoneer really has learned from all that came before it and not what to do and really present a great offering. And where it begins is with the exterior design and how tight the body lines are. Nice and liposuctioned up with maybe just a hint of flare above the four corners. That compared to a lot of predecessors that added extra cladding. Heck, if you look back to the Escalades with all those extra appointments just to head heavy to bulky, this looking a lot more sleek because naturally it's a big vehicle. You don't really need to weigh it down visually, so keep it tight like we see here. Also upsizing is of course at the four corners with those 22 inch wheels. Swing around to the front, this is where you're gonna see that family lineage right there in that seven slot grill, Jeep all in the front grabbing the attention. But as for the name and badging, not gonna be found in this vehicle anywhere, only Wagoneer on the front, the sides, and at the back end. As you look at the rest of the grill warfare, body color in this particular model all the way around, really darkening this vehicle up. That monochromatic look really has been at the forefront of some of these designs I've seen lately. Naturally with the glossed up black grill, the darkened body color, even in the headlight assembly, as you sweep down, again, the dual tones, barely even noticeable, really smoking this overall design, even right down to the toe handles blackened up. I like this look versus a Wagoneer that possibly could be more chromed up. Again, it's all in the eye of the beholder. Lastly is the headlight assembly, really sweeping across, menacing look. You've seen across the industry, SUVs, trucks, really going to a stacked approach. This menacing look really sets the tone. Of course, fog lights down low. If you notice over the grill warfare, really tight by the lines means no front traditional bumper. That's the case back here at the back, no extra overhang. About the only overhang you're gonna find is in those side step rails. As for the rest of the design, you're really seeing nice body color all the way around. This has the carbide addition, which means darkened accents around the windows, even down to the Wagoneer. And of course, all the glossy culminates nicely with this darkened look. Now this vehicle is fashioned after your traditional shoe box, but it doesn't make any apologies because it rather delivers straight boxy body lines versus cutting corners, which would compromise the interior functionality like a vehicle like this wants to deliver. Lastly is safety with the overall size of this vehicle. Well, there could be some white knuckling affair there behind the wheel. So of course to, well, downscale the overall size of this is the surround view on this vehicle. Cameras on the mirrors at the front and at the back, which pretty much means you can dive this vehicle into any tight spots, which makes it so much easier for anyone a little bit nervous there in the pilot position. Now what this vehicle is, how it measures up and well, just trying to figure that out was quite difficult because well, there's just so many nameplates that go with this vehicle. The Wagoneer is just one, Grand Wagoneer is another. This is the Wagoneer L, so that's another as well. Then you have the series one, two, and three. You have some other weird names that go along with the Grand Wagoneer. But all that said, well, I just wanna get down to the form and function. And with that, I finally maybe did. 
this vehicle back here delivering great cargo once you get to the numbers. Now, first off, how to get there is, of course, a power rear hatch to be expected on a classy vehicle like this. I like the fact that it gives you a huge offering when it comes to this overhang, though I'd say it is kind of a headbanging affair at just my six foot two inches. But once you slide inside, what you're seeing is around about 27 cubic feet of space behind the third row. As you lay the third row flat, it's gonna to go to about 70 cubic feet with everything laid flat around about 116 cubic feet. Now this is arguably gonna be a little bit smaller than my Yukon XL, but if you get into those kind of microscopic details, either one of them really measuring up. Now let's go to the exterior um, numbers and look and see the overall length. Again, trying to get true numbers on this vehicle, I found another place where it said 42 cubic feet behind the third row. So 27, 42, well, it's about this much space. So when it comes to overall size, well, your guess is as good as mine because I can't make heads or tails between a Wagoneer L, a Wagoneer, a Grand Wagoneer. There's just too many numbers out there and too many classifications for me to even really nail down. So I took the old measuring tape and got a roundabout. Basically overall, this vehicle is around about 215 inches long. Wheelbase around about 131, give or take a couple of inches. As for width, somewhere between 83 and 87 inches wide with the mirrors as you see it. And height around about 75, 76 inches tall. I'm six foot two if you just want to get a little bit of scale. But what I like is, well, those numbers because, well, they deliver up. Now, some other numbers I saw is that the, well, L measures about well, 12 inches longer than the standard model. With all that said, this is the big boy on the open road. I also heard that it, well, falls a little bit short of my own Yukon XL, but again, apples to apples, well, it's just one bite away from being sized up comparative to each other. But if you really wanna know how this measure up, do about 400 Google searches like I did and figure out which one really fits your mold. Now in my Yukon XL, that's gonna be a standard V8, but here, well, surprisingly in line six, but it is twin turbo referred to as the hurricane edition model. Now it's gonna deliver 420 horses and 468 foot pounds of torque coupled to an eight speed automatic transmission. Now if the space behind the third row isn't enough, you can utilize these power buttons over here on the right, just simply press right there and they'll automatically lay flat. If the headrest is in place, it will tumble forward at the last moment and lay flat just like that. Now, if you do want the third row to come back up, just hit simply hit the same corresponding button and you'll simply see it rise to the occasion. Now, one thing I did notice that if it is a little snug there with the second row, it sometimes will not automatically come up and you will have to do some maneuvering in the second row, but overall it works quite well. Now, when it comes to delivering people, you're gonna see room enough for three in the back, three in the second row, and two in the front in this particular Wagoneer L. What you also see is a different styling when it comes to the second row. What I'm referring to is almost three individualized attention for seating placement. That compared to others like my Yukon XL that has kind of a split bench styling, which means when you move one portion, it does about 75% uh, of the second row, moving it back and forth or laying it flat. In this case, you really have to interact with each seating placement, depending on what you're doing. First off, what I like is the ease of access back here. It's about the most wide offering when it comes to getting back there. Well, all you have to do is just simply press this button right here. It's gonna allow it to kind of tumble forward and give you great access. And of course, with that step rail here, you're really getting in and you're really gonna see great leg room numbers. But as you can tell, I still can interact with this one individually as well as that one, which can be kind of cumbersome. Because for example, if I wanna lay this flat, I just simply pull this handle here, it's gonna tumble forward. That is kind of a quick motion and while it was quite close to this rear screen, but we'll say to always miss it, just be careful not to have this back because that can be a banging affair. Just in case you missed it, let's try it one more time. As you can tell, really gets going. I'd say we could slow that down just a hair. As we go to the middle, what you're gonna notice on this side is a pull handle. Just simply pull there, it tumbles forward, just a little bit extra, gonna give it a nice flat, seamless floor from front to back. If you naturally had to get that one to lay flat, you then go around, press the button, lay it flat. So as I climb into the third row, just remember that I'm six foot two inches, so a grown adult getting back here 
quite quickly is surprising. What you're also going to notice really is the overall comfort. The third row uh, really not coming into contact with the back of the second row. You can see my knees aren't even touching this and this second row is in its furthest position and does have some reclinability to it. That means really there's not a bad seat in the house. What you also notice is with the headroom. This has that sunglass right here, sunroof, whatever you want to call it, really giving you a little bit of extra comfort so you don't feel squanched whatsoever. Also, the bench styling isn't positioned to the floor like a lot of third rows are where your knees are almost up in your chest. Instead, this has a fairly modest overall comfort, almost like a, a theater where it gets a little bit elevated as you get back here, giving you somewhat of a commanding view. But again, overall great comfort even for my tall, lanky frame. Now, before we dive up front, let's talk about the specifics to legroom numbers. 36 inches there in the back, 42 here in the second, and 40 inches in the front. That 36, unheard of. What you typically want to find is around 30, 31, maybe 32. And that's 36 with these pretty much in their furthest position. So comfort really is for the backseat drivers because 40 inches isn't bad, but while stretching out, reclining, and watching these TVs, well, that's where it's at. We've all been on those long trips with little ones back here, so we did whatever we could to keep them entertained, whether it was a bag of toys up front that we kept chunking to the back or now the latest additions of TV entertainment. Now, these are um, pretty much fed by wireless signals, pretty much meaning Wi-Fi in this vehicle, and you're going to get the latest and greatest streaming services right here at your tablet and each, of course, individualized. Now, I'll show you something up front to keep that front co-pilot happy just as well tri-zone system to be expected on the vehicle this big dual zones up front single zone back here digital display up and down for temperature select as well as mode select here in the middle either straight venting or floor venting as well as fan speed found in the form of these buttons on the side if you want to have some extra heating things up that's found in the heated seats on the outer side surprisingly with the individualized attention in the middle not sure why we couldn't go through or cross cross with heating things up down below connectivity traditional household outlet here usb um, uh, combos right here and traditional car outlet on the side first thing you'll notice when you climb inside is the huge infotainment system really with shortcuts over here on the left and right this being for heated and cooled seats for the driver and passenger and other shortcuts now this is the home screen giving you kind of this uh, three split widget these are customizable and you really refer to these as pages because you can swipe to the left and have more customizable this really seeing your driving dynamics how your suspension is doing and even the various ride heights this vehicle can ride at what i truly like though is the shortcuts down below and the apple carplay that is kind of the new function that a lot of vehicles are going to really allow you not have to manually connect your phone but instead wirelessly project it here and it looks just like when you're interacting with your phone with all your various shortcuts and apps just like that these shortcuts down below thankfully can be customized or rearranged where you want them finding ones that you like better closer to the driver the ones you don't care for further to the passenger but in my cases oftentimes i just wanted to get to that function and i just couldn't get there because i held it too long so you might get frustrated along the way one thing you also notice is right here this thing called passenger screen on or off that does not refer to what's behind you but rather what's over there with the passenger beside you if you press it on what you'll see is well the same functionality that your driver has but interestingly you cannot see it from the driver's position it almost has kind of like a privacy screen obviously so the driver is not distracted but the passenger can basically interact with tons of different functionality and it's just another bells and whistles you can play with this vehicle does have the eight speed automatic transmission it comes with this central knob here that selects the gear back and forth if you do want to change the ride height you do have various settings you'll see right here with the illumination just simply press up or down to lower or raise it now that of course is based on the driving at the time so too fast it will lower down if you're crawling on rocks or whatever of course you can raise it up over on the left side will be the robustness when it comes to the four-wheel drive picking the various mode settings whether it be sport auto snow uh, sand or rock now my preference is well to keep it down here the other two because scrapes and dings don't look fancy on this eighty-seven thousand dollar vehicle as for connectivity you will find it in the form of this wireless charging pad and a nice little niche over there if you want to put some other uh, phones 
keeping everything look nice and sleek is this little cover here you can press down making everything nice and uniform even right down to the cup holders but of course you press right there and it will expose two cup holders and a little area right there now one thing to be careful of i always wonder is this little niche right here because oftentimes if you put something on top and then you open it up well that can be a gobbling affair basically anything sliding right down there as you open it well just be mindful of that between the front occupants, you will find built-in armrests on top of the center console. You will find also this upper tray that you can connect devices to and charge them up with two USB connections. Cover this up, making it nice and sleek when not needed. You can press the handle here. That's gonna lift up and show a nice deep storage console. Underneath is lighting, so it will light up at night, but there is no upper trays to shallow this when needed. So it is kind of just an area you can dump things in and uh, scavenge your hunt later. Now to say you're gonna need a book to figure out how to use everything, well the gauge cluster is probably front and center at the, well, cumbersome part. What I'm referring to is finding the right gauge cluster. On the steering wheel, you will find a little button right here. Just simply press that. That'll give you various functionalities and you can kind of scroll through, hit the enter button. Then it will kind of come up in different options. You can scroll left and right, see various functionality. But the problem is I was on one screen that showed the speedometer, the tachometer had the speed in the middle, and then I'm just trying to find it again. And I just cannot find that no matter how far I keep going through it. I just cannot find where I had originally left off. And I just keep searching and searching. There's one, but that's still not the one I like. And I just keep searching and I just keep getting madder and madder. So just feel free to spend your days here because there is a nice, pretty gauge cluster that shows a tack over here and a speed over here, speedometer over here, and a nice digital read in the middle. But, well, I just can't find it. So when it finally comes down to sizing this vehicle up against the competition, you could say it's all in the tape measure, the eye of the beholder, or, well, just getting the job done. And thankfully, the Wagoneer L truly delivers and of course it's all in the overall size the offerings on the inside and just basically how it fits in the driveway and in the open road getting all those done well naturally fits in with the competition quite well as always like thank you for watching this edition of road warrior keep both hands on the wheel and eyes straight ahead